Okay, fire. Uh, is this the equivalent of yelling fire in a crowded restaurant? Uh, well, hopefully not. You're crowd, not crowded. Uh, you're probably watching individually. Although, maybe you're watching in a group. Study groups are good. Anyways, um, fire seems simple. Uh, and it is. Uh, but there are a few things that you need to keep in mind when you are talking about fire. Um, fire is not something to play around with. Uh, it is a good servant, but a poor master. It is um, uh, to be left to the experts, but there are a few things that you need to know um, to have basic provisions to protect your company, your people, uh, from it. Now, um, starting with the fact that, what you know, how are we dealing with fire? What are we doing with fire? Um, we want to detect it. We want to uh, prevent it. And, and prevention is actually, that's probably should be first. Um, making sure that uh, we don't have a problem with fire is always more advisable than dealing with the fire. So, uh, prevention, detection, and suppression. If uh, we detect it and, and if we have an issue with it. Um, in terms of prevention, uh, using fire resistant materials for walls, for uh, construction, for um, uh, you know the, the general uh, outline of the, the building, um, fire resistant paints even. Uh, paint itself will burn. Uh, if it's if it's not the right kind, you can get uh, paints that do not burn, and that will in fact form a bit of a barrier to prevent uh, the material underneath them from burning. Um, drywall, you will remember the the uh, plaster in the middle of it doesn't burn, but there's cardboard coverings on both sides of it, so you know that will burn. So uh, you know, pay attention to construction, uh, pay attention uh, to what you can do uh, to prevent fires from starting in the first place. Um, reduce the amount of combustible materials. And as I mentioned a couple of times probably already, none of you have any uh, boxes of printer paper in the machine room. None of you have racks of uh, shelves of, of manuals, paper manuals, in the machine room. Um, you know, we uh, we don't have uh, as much issues as, as garages do with, you know, oily rags and that sort of thing. We don't use oil on computers and uh, we don't use rags. Um, but even dust uh, build up. You know, uh, make sure that you are doing some maintenance there, uh, vacuuming out the systems, um, and even around uh, uh, office areas, desk areas, you know, the desktop computers, whatever. Uh, that uh, dust and lint can build up, and it can be quite inflammable. So, you know, uh, do that. Now, fire prevention training. Uh, to employees and and again you know this is per fire prevention training now fire suppression training we'll, we'll go into that in a bit when we talk about suppression but prevention training just the awareness you know what will burn and uh, how to avoid uh, stockpiles of it how to uh, prevent buildup um, and particularly in areas like the machine room where there's a lot of electricity and we could get a spark gap to start something burning. Um, now, uh, 
gain life safety is the most important principle, always. Um, and uh, so the first thing, you know, the, the first principle is if you detect a fire, if uh, something starts to burn, you get everybody out. That is number one. You know, if you have plans for dealing with the fire, if you have specific procedures for dealing with the fire, and if your people are trained for that, then, you know, good. But, in general, the first thing you do is get everybody out. That is uh, the, the most important thing. As I say, you know, life safety. Um, conduct fire drills so that people know how to get out. Um, it's uh, interesting. In uh, aviation, they do conduct uh, drills with uh, people exiting an aircraft. Um, one of the problems that they have in conducting those drills is that after three or four times uh, having everybody evacuate the plane, uh, people start to realize the importance of the directions and they become trained in exiting the plane. And so they have to get like a new naive group of subjects to uh, plan um, exit strategies, uh, aisle widths and, and that sort of thing um, because um, the the people that they've been using uh, learn and uh, of course you know if you're in a fire the first time you're in a fire is you know probably the first time you've been in a fire so uh, anyways conduct the fire drills it is important uh, to get people to know that um, just uh, I, one more thing, I suppose, in terms of prevention, and that's knowing the elements of fire or, or combustion. And that is having fuel, oxygen, and a sufficient temperature. So, you know, as I say, reducing the um, uh, combustible materials in construction and in the machine room is... Uh, you know, that removes the fuel. Uh, but equally, um, you need oxygen. And so consider, um, you know, what you've got in regard to ventilation, what you've got in regard to air plenum spaces. Um, can uh, the room, which may contain fuel and combustible materials, can it be sealed off? Is it small enough that it can be sealed off and the fire will stop by itself because the oxygen runs out. Um, and also, the temperature. You know, is there uh, something you can do to um, moderate the temperature so that it won't reach high temperatures and it won't start fuel and oxygen combining and burning? So, um, those are the elements of uh, prevention. And those are the elements of fire. You know, that's how you start a fire. So that's how you prevent a fire from happening in the same way that we talked about risk management, that you have the, uh, you have the materials, um, you have a certain situation. Um, you, you know, conduct a risk. What does the fire need to start and what can we do to remove one of those elements?